So in other words, the problem is this. The access point holds several packets. state, the entire TCP state of the old access point must be transferred. This is uh, this process can be costly if those buffers are large. And in fact, this is a disadvantage. So, a couple of disadvantages of this approach. I mean, it has the obvious advantage. Let me start with that. Advantages. Yeah, it's conceptually simple. Isolates um, the wireless link. Of the TCP connection. So you'll never get into a situation where uh, the noisy connection will cause will lead to a slow start that you didn't need that you didn't need to do. The disadvantage is. Handover is costly. And uh, results in high latency. So in other words, before the T when handover happens, before the TCP connection can be brought up in the new access point, all of the all of the TCP state has to be transferred from one node to the other. Um, so that could potentially take a significant amount of time. So the entire TCP state must be transferred. There's another fairly big disadvantage if your routers are not reliable. That is that um, access point crashes. Access point. Um, the access, the first access point, 
already has all of your TCP state. So if that goes down with the access point, your connection is lost. Yeah. So the entire access point trying to preserve your connection That's right. Would, would there be some Um, so I'm thinking here of a scenario like uh, the access point is a bug in it, so uh, the access point can't anticipate that it's going to crash, it just does, and then that's it, you're dead. Power outage. Power outage, there's another So, um, like, the access point is a blue screen of death, and that's, that's the scenario. So if, if you're, if you're, um, your access, this is, this doesn't occur very often, that, that's the more compelling disadvantage. But if the access point crashes, it'll take your connection with it. So, yes. And, and whatever data was in its buffer, the connecting node thinks you got that. That's and correct. And for all intents and purposes, assume that everything works successfully. It has no idea that you didn't get it at all. That's correct. So the last five packets of your Ubuntu DVD download thinks you got it, but you didn't. And so there's no way to get, it. No way to get back to that. Pardon me? Isn't uh, mobile load acknowledging Yes, but those the two sides of that connection are isolated from each other. The acknowledgements from mobile node to access point, uh, they don't play any part in the TCP connection. So, okay. So there is no, so mobile node doesn't know that it actually lost some packet? No, not at all. There's no, there's no, uh, I guess you could say those protocols don't have any common information. So, um, uh, the access point will acknowledge a packet, will TCP acknowledge a packet as soon as it enters its own buffer. So um, as soon as it enters the buffer, uh, as far as TCP is concerned, that packet has arrived at the destination, even though it hasn't, it's only arrived at the access point. Uh, so there's no, uh, there's no communication to, like suppose there could be, but it's not clear what, uh, what benefit that would have. There's no communication, there's not necessarily any communication the access point of the mobile node saying, uh, I still got an extra number of packets for you. Or the other way, um, uh, the acknowledgments from, from the <coughs> mobile node to access point of no TCP significance and can influence the connection. So that's an advantage, actually. Um, as long as you sit still and your access point doesn't crash, uh, that's, that's an advantage. Yeah? So how long is the access point expected? So again, it's going to have a timeout. Um, what, probably what will happen is, uh, I mean, that's, that's just a point-to-point -point thing, right? So it's from access point through an antenna straight to your mobile. So uh, it's going to transmit each of those packets and wait for acknowledgments to ensure that you got them so they weren't faded out. So there's probably going to be a, a, a fairly short timeout. Uh, so if, if the timeout expires, then it happens. So the buffer doesn't have to be significantly longer than that time. Oh, but it's like somebody accepted my mail box, yeah. and they're all waiting for it to get forwarded to me. Yes. So they, they're responsible for that mail. Like if, if, I don't, if I switch my phone off and then come back in the network in three hours, there should, still should be able to get those packets since they've acknowledged them. That's true. Um, well, that's, that's if you requested them and then turned your phone off. That's right. So uh, there, is a, there is a protocol that does that. Um, I mean, surely there has to be some way to track how much of the bandwidth is passing through access point. Surely, even by trial and error, there must be some average threshold for bandwidth which, at every, which point it would normally crash. So, so, I'm not like, uh, so your your uh, your concept of crash is crash based on overload. Um, so I'm, I'm basically talking about a generic crash, like power outage, that's a good one. So uh, uh, the access point is happily going along, and suddenly the power is cut, and it like, can't anticipate that. So it just 